Welcome back my rogues. Today's question is serious. What happened in your this is not a drill moment during work, school etc. Hope you enjoy and check me out on Instagram. We were all in psychophysiopatho class when the alarm bell rang. It's a class where the whole lot of us are divided in random 20. 25 people group of students. I D I D N T know any of the people in this group very well. But we were polite to each other. The teacher said no drill was supposed to take place. So we all raced the best we could outside except I was in crutches at the time. And the building we were in was old and had a lot of stairs. I was lagging behind, getting more and more scared that I would be left alone. Our teacher was already out, and the bulk of the group was far ahead, and I had no friends in here to make sure I was safe. But four of my classmates, all girls, noticed I was struggling and doubled back to help me. It could have been any kind of danger fire, a dumbass with a weapon, but they did and hesitate one second once they saw me. One of them took my med bag, another took my crutches, the other two put my arms around their shoulders and half pushed me out, half carried me out. I was in the high school gym donating blood when the alarm for an active shooter lockdown went off. The doors were quickly locked and people were told to remain calm and duck under tables but those office giving blood and hooked up to the machines had to stay in place. It turned out to be that a few young men had stolen a car and had driven it recklessly onto school property. A police helicopter had somehow gotten involved which sparked the panic. There were no guns involved, thank goodness, but it definitely was not a good first time donating blood experience. I was viewing a traveling exhibit about the Titanic. When you entered the exhibit, you were given a ticket which had the name of an actual person aboard the Titanic. At the end you would get to see if they survived or not. Right as we finished seeing if our person lived or died, the fire alarm went off in the museum. The exhibit staff ushered everyone into the staff area behind the exhibit and down the emergency. Says, everything was lit with emergency lighting only and really cramped. And after having just been in the exhibit you really felt like you were escaping a sinking ship. Probably the most surreal emergency I've ever experienced edit for those asking. Yes my person did survive. They tried to match your person as close to you as possible. I was a kid at the time so my person was a child. Much higher chance of surviving if you were a kid or a woman. My college dorm had to evacuate because of fire. Some girl was making a toast at 4am and the toaster caught fire. No serious damage was caused and firemen came pretty quickly, but being woken up by fire alarms, seeing everybody panicking and then having to wait outside for like two hours in December was not fun. One tornado hit our house. We heard the sirens. My dad and I woke up my mum and brother and we barely made it to the basement before it hit. Two active shooter outside my job. It was some young kid who was running around and waving a gun around like it was some toy. He tried to get into the store I worked at that. Fortunately, I had already locked him because it was closing time. I had my employees hide in the fridge while I called 911. I was in 10th grade age 15 for non-Americans when 911 happened. It's hard to explain to those who DIDNT lived through it how much the world changed literally in a day. And how while there was internet there weren't smartphones or social media so news traveled less. Instantaneously, for us we were called out of class to go to an assembly and we were all joking around because our School had a way of over-dramatizing random admin things that DIDNT really matter. Uh, but we are searching for a new vice principal. Variety. I probably still had a wisecrack grin on my face as the head of school said they all wanted us to be together to hear this news. Then she said the World Trade Center has been attacked, which was when my cousin worked. And I remember the room literally looked different. We were all watching TV screens less than an hour later as the second tower fell. And we got a local breaking news about a plane crash outside Pittsburgh. Which is quite the thing when your school is in Pittsburgh, and you think it was heading for us because no one knew until many days later where the fourth plane was heading heck the DID and to even know there were only four. So yeah, that moment with the World Trade Center has been attacked and how the room looked different. Literally and figuratively, I will never forget that. Kid brought a gun to school, he wanted to show it off, and pulled it out at lunch. Yeah, you're not supposed to fucking do that. He got expelled, was relieved of any actual criminal charges on account of no bullets were brought and he was so young, but everyone dipped from the lunchroom and all the other classes got locked down. I remember being in class when it happened, and not one of us thought it was real because our school did a drill every quarter for that shit. And it was like midway through one of them, this was 8th grade. Oh boy, this is gonna be long. JSYK on a 225 boy tender in the middle of the Pacific. Halfway between Hawaii and Mexico, when you're on a ship at sea if there's a fire, there's no 911. So you practice all the time for stuff like fire, flooding, collision, etc. But those drills occur during the day when most of the crew is awake. 
You're alert, the sun is out, and the conditions are normally good, for safety reasons, but emergencies almost never happen during the day or when the sea state is calm. It was 4 a.m., I was in my rack asleep after getting off watch, so I had only been asleep for 4 hours when the general emergency alarm went off. That's the alarm that sounds for any emergency aside from collision and chemical. So I bolt upright with a what the fuck, thinking someone accidentally hit the alarm up on the bridge, but when the watch officer comes over the ship's announcement system saying to set the main space, fire doctrine for a fuel oil leak in the engine room, my stomach drops, im out of my rack, into my coveralls and boots, and out to the repair locker faster than he can finish the announcement, most of the crew is already at the locker, the attack team is getting their firefighting gear on, and the engineering officer is trying to get information from the engineering watch stander. The investigators were already gone to investigate the scene. We all get our protective gear on, and I gather my team. I'm in charge of the pump team, and our job is to set up the portable fire pumps to supplement the installed ones in case the water pressure drops, but the pumps are located outside the skin of the ship on the boy deck. And it's 4am in the middle of the ocean, most people forget just how dark the night is. With artificial lights we have essentially conquered night and claimed it for ourselves. Despite our relatively poor night vision in comparison to other species, but when you are days away from any land, and the lookouts need their night vision preserved for their watch, that means it is awfully dark once the sun goes down, makes for great stargazing though. Anyways, I get permission to start setting up, so my team and I all grab flashlights and head out, it's dark as shit, and the pumps are heavy, and all in all it sucked, it sucks during drills and it doubly sucks in the middle of the night. We get the first pump set up and are about to start the second when we get told to wait. I certainly didnt complain, I absolutely hate those are pumps, we go back into the repair locker to wait, apparently the leak wasnt that bad, and was able to be secured by the investigators, the cleanup crew heads down to clean up so the fuel doesn't create a toxic gas environment, and we go to pack the pump back up, there was a general feeling of amusement at the situation, tbh, also, a lot of pride in our response, we hit all the time requirements setting up boundaries and such, and as a crew we felt like we did good, the command felt the same way too, cause the work day was suspended, we only had to go to our watches, the rest of the day could be spent however we wanted, there was a movie being played in the crew's lounge, and some of the guys set up an inflatable pool on the boy deck to chill in, me, I went back to sleep, it was just at home but I think it was May 2019. We're about to leave for a funeral and there was a sudden earthquake. I think it was a 6 and it was surreal as it was the strongest earthquake I felt. We took shelter under door frames and nobody was hurt gladly. I was at a movie theater, one of the big ones with 12 screens. Halfway through the movie an alarm goes off and no one really reacts. And then a recorded voice advising that an emergency situation has arisen and we're to vacate the area immediately, 12 screens emptying simultaneously into the foyer created havoc, some minor crush injuries, people falling and tripping others, it was chaos, kids screaming, parents trying to get in to find their kids, 5 minutes later and we are still inching towards the doors, and a real voice comes on and advises it was a false alarm and to go back and they will restart the movies, important lesson from this for everyone if you need to evacuate from a movie theater, take the exit near the screen that goes straight out of the building, and not the one that goes back to the foyer. We're showing a documentary to my class about the second week of the semester when the president of the college came on the loudspeaker to tell us to shelter in place. Somebody had tweeted pictures of his guns saying he wanted to light up the library. And when the FBI pinged his phone, he was on my campus. My classroom was directly above the library. We all knew this because of our smartphones. This was right before lunch. I was escorted out of the building around dinner time. Turned out the student was laughing. He was visiting our campus that day with his high school. Fuck him. I live in a small condo complex that backs up against a major highway. Separated by a tall barrier that's part concrete, part decorative wood. So it's like 5 a.m. and in dead asleep in the house shakes. I roll over, thinking man, someone said a fireworks way too late in the night. I'm barely asleep again, and it shakes. This time I hear the boom, and I'm like, fuck those firework loving kids. Well, I'm awake, might as well use the bathroom. So I'm in the bathroom, and the house shakes again boom. Huh, so I look out the back window, and there's an inferno just past the backyard, right where the lawn meets the barrier. Oh, and this is right after all those people burned to death in their houses in CA. No, wake up the husband, shove the cat in the carrier, grab your wallet, get in the car and leave. The only exit from the complex is right past the inferno, but we make it okay. The cat's pissed, the husband doesn't see what the big deal is H.E.S. still mostly asleep. And in like where can we go watch the news in our pajamas? 
So the neighborhood Starbucks were watching on our phones. The local fire department hosing down our condos with fireproof foam. The gas tanker caught fire and pulled over. Then the three compartments caught fire individually. The driver made it out. Our place was fine. And now I have a go bag, just in case. When I was in school, about 20 years ago I think, we had a bomb threat. They evacuated the entire school out to the baseball fields for hours before they let us go home. Early, the very next day, we went back to school and they kept us locked in our classrooms for hours while the bomb squad removed bomb material from what I was told from the very baseball fields that they had made us wait. On the day before, Simone ignited a marshmallow in one of the school tolliers. My dad was a firefighter. He was casually watching Titanic at the theater you know when this happened then out of nowhere. During the movie, projectors stopped, all lights shut down and some guy opened the door of the theater and told everyone to get out. There was a fire, as my dad walked out, his firefighter senses were triggered, he felt the draft of air being sucked out of the theater room. Going into the main hall, fire alarm couldn't be heard from inside because the volume of the movie was so loud. Everyone got out, it was a big complex with restaurants and bars next to the cinema. Everything burnt down, millions dollars of damages, it was a teenager playing with matches while smoking behind dumpsters. My dad had to wait for the double VHS to be released to know how Titanic ended. That's the best part of this story happening in the 20th century. School had a lockdown, was coming back from lunch and saw a bunch of cops, asked one what's up and was told someone had reported a gun in the building and it's on lockdown. I went home, found out the next day kid had a BB gun in his backpack and I guess pissed off a friend who then told the office what he had. Side note, the group that kid would run with was known for starting fights with people over nothing, so I guess karma is a bitch. I was taking the SAT. We were maybe 30 minutes into the writing section when the fire alarm goes off. Some guy started a fire in the computer lab of the building because he did and bring proper ID and they wouldn't let him take his test. We had to sit outside for three hours in silence before they decided, never mind you guys have to retake this in a month. School had to evacuate cause of the fire. It was put out before it got serious but it turns out the DT technician accidentally started then. Actual fire and we were outside for ages. WASNT a big fire at all but was still surprising something actually happened. I once worked in a law firm. They got a bomb threat and we were evacuated from the building. Did I mention that it was my first day in there? There was a shelter in place tornado warning. It was on that day that we learned our school had a bomb shelter below the pool locker rooms in it. Was some cold war shit. Damp concrete walls, doors with small round windows and the lights were those old oval shaped with a metal cage like what you'd see on a submarine. Even had safety posters circa 196,070s. We were in home economics cooking stir fry and the girl opposite me and her partner turned their stove up too high and set fire to the oil in the wok. Our teacher was at the other side of the class and DIDNT even noticed that then she was not very observant and half deaf. The girls and my partner started screaming and freaking out I told him to turn off the stove and set the pan on the table but they DIDNT listen and one of them panicked and put the pan in their sink. She put a pan of urine oil in a sink full of water. Needless to say it got worse and chaos ensured. The alarm went off. Our teacher finally noticed the screaming and proceeded to berate us. School was evacuated and the fire department came. Luckily no one was hurt but the girls tried to put the blame on me saying I told him to put the pan in the sink that some of my classmates backed me up. I was teaching at a high school a couple years back when my co-teacher came over from the next room and quietly asked if I had checked my email recently. I had not. When I looked there was an urgent message from admin telling us that we were currently under a stay in place lockdown. Apparently some guy had gotten into a shootout with local PD earlier. Ran and was currently somewhere just off campus. Still armed and dangerous. But since he WASNT an immediate threat we were not to tell the students and continue class as normal. If the lockdown lasted into the next period they'd come up with an excuse to keep all the kids in. Place the kicker for me was that one entire wall of my classroom was floor to ceiling windows. To make it worse the ceiling in my room was 20 feet. We may as well have been sitting in the field outside my room for all the security we had. I made a quick decision to shoehorn a slideshow into my lesson so I had a believable excuse to close all the blinds. Luckily the lockdown only lasted until just before the end of the period. So nobody had to punt on an excuse for what was happening. I like to think I covered well and that none of my students noticed that I was freaking out. Internally, none of them ever questioned me about it so hopefully I did. Was doing a chemistry practical test when the fire alarm went off. The head of science came in said continue your work. 
It's just a drill. So we kept going. Point two minutes later the head came back and said sorry. There actually is a fire. WASNT a big one. But still lol. In my school we often have bomb threats. Since 8th grade, we've had 3 or 4 threats and I'm in 11th grade now. Obviously none of them have been real but we had to evacuate each time. Some of the times we just went home. Some of the times we the IDNT. I think our school is starting to get lazy about bomb threats because during the last one we had. They put everyone in the gym and then sent everybody back to class after. I only call it lazy because all it takes is just a little intellect from someone who's really placing bombs to outlast the police, firefighters, etc. who investigate the situation and then the bombs go off when we're in class or when we're in the gym. Weird thing is, my school I are sent in a sketchy place or anything. We live in the suburbs of southern New Hampshire and our town is rather wealthy the school is. Pretty big for a suburb though. I think bomb threats are more of a trend than anything that is passed down class by class or year by year just because it happens so often. We had someone fall off a boat down at the boat launch when I worked at a campground. She hit her head on the dock and started sinking while unconscious. Luckily her BF dug in and grabbed her before she drowned. However, she was incoherent so we had to immobilize warm her up in a truck then call in a heli to take her to the nearest hospital. It was crazy. We had to mark a landing zone and lay down some flares and everything. Was in the cafeteria at uni but it was still pretty early so we were nearly the only ones there. The fire alarm goes off and we assume it's a drill so we don't move. But the alarm goes off much longer than usual. I went to check what was going on and saw the kitchen staff all going outside. Turns out there was an actual fire in the kitchen. Went back to my friends and we finally left. It was a small fire so nothing happened but definitely not waiting it out again. It was in the wake of 911. I was in a Wakuni working with Marines. When we got quarantined over possible anthrax exposure a Marine had brought in any service member letter with white powder in it into the shop. About 15 of us sat under armed guard, then went through decontamination, then bus to medical for nasal swabs, and given a 10-day cycle of antibiotics. Tests came back negative and we were all fine. Aside from the freezing cold water for Deacon, it WASNT that bad. Sucked less than the gas chamber in boot camp. First some background I'm a rocket engineer working for the ESA. Maybe you can guess what happened. I was on a business trip to one of the rocket engine factories. So they were testing a new kind of engine and something from inside the fuel tank breaks on and goes in the engine and clogs the exhaust for a microsecond before the whole engine explodes in to sparks and sharp metal pieces. This is why you test rocket stuff before you use it. Last period of the day in middle school, we get told over the intercom to remain in our classes. Then another announcement for control class by class evacuation. Turns out someone had mailed the school white powder saying it was anthrax and they were not sure how far it might have spread from the office. The school was closed the next day and it made the news. But luckily it was not actually anthrax. It was running program at a summer camp when our fire siren went on. But it only lasted about two seconds, instead of the normal few minutes. So I assumed nothing. Then the radio came on that there was a fire, not a drill. Immediately sent my staff that way and my camp air back to their sites. Secured my area and then bolted. Passed my staff along with a few others on my way to the gathering point only to be stopped at our main pavilion. Apparently the fire was already out, so they cancelled everything instead of running it out. Turns out it was an electrical fire in the siren lost power. We then decided that we should investigate the being on a battery backup. There was an earthquake. It was not that strong, but it was still an earthquake. Everyone was treating it as a drill, which meant talking and talking and talking until our advisor said that it was not a drill and everyone started panicking. Good times. Working with my dad, asked me to hold the flashlight while he was working, asked me to bring the drill for him, and I did and know what tool was at. Ended up coming back with a circular saw. This is not a drill, he said. We had to do lockdown as someone came into school with a knife once. Some little shit pressed the fire alarm. I work in a grocery store, and one night code Adam was called over the PA code Adam is a missing child. I go guard the emergency exit near my department, and 10 minutes later, the code Adam is cancelled. The kid was in the bathroom, perfectly safe. It was woodworking in my classes we have a dust collector connected to an automatic sander and a nail happened to get sanded and made sparks to find wood chips so it exploded in fire in a woodwork building. Last November half my school burnt down. Everybody thought it was just another drill until we got outside and began to smell smoke there was. A mad panic as all 1300 students were registered and registered again until we knew everyone was out. 
The worst part was it was started by two first-year students. Once someone pulled the fire alarm to avoid a test but her cooking class had left stuff in the ovens. Which then set them off again. We got to miss a full hour. Had a bomb threat in high school once. Had a more serious bomb threat at work once. Had lots of tornadoes. Once in school, we were going through classes normally when the fire alarm goes off that. Since it's early in the year everyone thinks it's a drill. But it might as well have been a drill since it was a small fire in the science class which was put out easily and not even in the school but in a portable upside though. I got to see a real praying mantis. Though it did catch me by surprise cause it took me a while to realize it was there even though I was standing right next to it. There was a fire and we always had those drills and they say this is not a drill but this time it WASNT a drill and nobody cared we walked out so nonchalantly I even went back for my lunchbox. And then we get out and realize the building next to ours has a fire. Pretty short but deal with it. When I was in year 5 4th grade the fire alarm set off for some reason. The students were pretty calm because they all thought it was a drill. It WASNT. The teachers were kind of scared but wisely. They didnt tell the students that it WASNT. So everyone went out onto the playground and lined up in their year groups. My teacher went inside and went to investigate why the alarm went off. He is 66 rugby player so he was probably the best person to go in. Turns out the special kid was messing around and set it off and he was expelled. It WASNT too bad BCE we all got like an hour of extra break. If you are reading this Savvy, thanks bro, I got a chance to trade some of my gold moshi monsters. A friend of mine DIDNT believed me that we were under a bomb threat and go shot with a beanbag by the cops. It was very serious but none of us including him couldn't stop laughing about it after the cops left. My freshman year on high school, we were suddenly told during our OTC to run inside and get in the closet with no explanation. Lights off and the higher ranking cadets ready ropes to use to get us down two stories by the window. Some were prepared to grab the air rifles. I knew this WASNT a drill when the sergeants wouldn't tell us what was going on. Everyone became suddenly terrified we were going to be killed one by one. Despite being in the safest spot on campus we found out the next day someone had brought a gun on campus. They also brought dogs on campus and arrested many kids with weed on them while they investigated. The gun issue, a second lockdown happened similarly. We were rounded into the buildings and hidden since someone was murdered up the street. That one WASNT too scary though. When I was in the army, one time air raid sirens started blaring in the base. The two female soldiers that were in the building with me started panicking and I, thinking it was just a system test, started messing with him by shouting commands the whole duck and cover thing. After a few seconds of me giggling while they were hiding under a desk I started hearing explosions. The day before I had half day pass and went home. Turns out that while I was enjoying a bit of time off, tensions with the northern border got real bad and some shit started happening in the area. But I didnt know any of it because I didnt consume any news in my time off. So now I'm beginning to panic because this building is made of drywall and asbestos. So I grabbed the girls and we dashed to the nearest bunker. Not when I was a student but back in mid-April, a couple days before the quarantine, we had an active shooter lockdown at the elementary school I work at. It was a normal day. Kids were doing their normal stuff at lunch recess. Staff notice a few police cars around what is usually a very safe and quiet area. But just brush it off. Suddenly our secretary tells us over our walkie-talkies that the police have called and ordered us to lock down the school. Immediate activity. Honestly we don't ever practice for this scenario happening at recess. So him amazed it went as well as it did. We are also a high needs school, with a lot of behavioural issues and even on a good day getting all the kids inside after recess is difficult. The secretary sounded the bell ending recess and staff started ushering kids inside. At the same time as around 10 police cars showed up on the surrounding streets. The kids were really confused because they normally line up and wait for their teacher. But we were telling them to go in and just go to their classrooms. Their teachers are waiting. I'm guessing the difficult kids realised something was up because none of them gave us any issue. Just it is told we ended up in lockdown with the kids sitting quietly and all doors closed for about 40 minutes, listening to cops outside and sirens and stuff. The kids from kindergarten up did amazing. One of my co-workers shoved about 12 kids in the special needs bathroom and was stuck there for 40 min with him because a cop came by the outside door and yelled at her to get them out of view. Turns out in the nearby downtown core of my city there had been a shooting very rare here in the guy took off up our way. Last he had been seen was on the side street next to the school and someone told cops he was trying to get into the school. They caught him a few blocks away, but it was a really intense hour for us. 
During the fires in featuring McMurray in 2016, we saw the smoke from our camp. Thought nothing of it. Then the radio started chirping, saying that the highway was cut off and we were stuck. One road in, one road out scenario. We helicoptered most of our crew up with foreman staying behind on shutdown and fire lock. Duty, stayed there for three weeks during the fires. The morning seriously looked like Silent Hill, with all the ash raining down. An outside contractor deleted a production database over a billion records while running some tests. The whole facility was fucked for the next week while we restored the data from tape. Lots of complications followed, the mistake cost the company several million. When I was a first year teacher on the eighth day of school year one of my third graders came with a black iron burn sheet did and want to talk about it. She got incredibly upset and she ended up telling me what had happened between her and her mum. I had to call down to the office to get someone to cover my class so I could run and tell admin. In a teacher prep program you are told about these situations but it doesn't feel real when it happens. Nothing can prepare you. I was in the 7th grade and we had a tornado warning, or watch. Whichever is the one that a tornado has touched down. Being that my stepdad was in the masonry business, and our school was made a block in brick, I knew we were in possibly the safest place to be during a tornado, we're under our desks and I yelled. We're all gonna die, I got suspended for threats even though I was laughing and explained that we were in the safest place we could be, I just thought it was silly that we were under our desks when we weren't really in any danger. Several kids did start crying, which made it even funnier. Freshman year, there was a student walking to school in the morning, and just a few feet off campus were some guys who weren't students blasting their shitty rap music. The student asked these guys to turn their music down. The guy said sure, and the student started walking away, and as soon as his back was turned they shot him. I was in the PE locker room when they put us into lockdown, and there was a lot of confusion about what was happening. Finally after two hours of being in lockdown the police determined their WASNT a hostile shooter on campus and they gave us the option to go home if the parents signed us out or go to class. I went home, my sister stayed but said nobody did any actual work. The student was airlifted to the hospital and made a full recovery. Some co-workers and I were out having a smoke break when an all black dart SUV rolls up in the employee parking lot. We were all confused as the man was trying to yell something to us. Only a person heard that he was screaming get inside and that's when we heard three gunshots coming from behind us. There was an active shooter in the building next to ours. So we all rushed inside and our boss put us on full lockdown. I overheard the guy was being chased for domestic violence and decided to run into the forest vats. Behind our shop, TLDR there was an active shooter in the forest behind work. Could have been shot because we wanted to smoke. Skydiving load, 2,800 feet up. Engine stalls. Pilot yells back at the fuck out we all get the fuck out and the plane lands safely with the engine stalled. They fix it and we get back to work without further incident. I work at a large international airport press security. One day I was helping some upset customers and just trying to get them out of my store when we heard gunshots and I looked up to see people screaming and running. I motioned the customers into the storage closet that's disguised behind a mirror. We could still hear running and yelling and then I heard people come into my store and were trying to hide behind the counter. I opened my closet door and motioned them inside. I had around 10 people shoved into like a 10 by 4 space with all of my back stock and shelving too. My manager called me asking if I was okay and said he was stuck behind security and the airport had shut down all the trams so he couldn't get up to me but to stay safe. Eventually we got the all clear to get up and head out. Luckily it turned out the guy only had a corkscrew but someone in the TSA line just yelled he had a gun and started the panic. I was still working as a hostess and we had just opened up. In the morning we usually only have three servers on the floor for the first 30 or so minutes. Five, six families immediately walk in, which is good for the openers. Everybody gets two tables to start. I was seating the last of the families when I heard a horrible wail from the back. I honestly the IDNT think anything of it first. Until I realized two of the three servers HADNT come out front to greet their tables one of the servers. While switching out the tea bags, scolded herself across the face with boiling water. The second server was already calling paramedics and trying to keep her calm while she went into shop. So now I had one server for six tables. About half of them were intensely understanding but one fucking family was giving me max attitude. I finally snapped at the wife and said mom, the server in charge of your section just suffered third degree burns across her face. If you're in such a rush that you cannot wait for emergency crews to get here, I would be more than happy to suggest other establishments that can accommodate you. Right at that moment, the EMTs arrived. Six huge Captain America stunt doubles finagling the gurney through the restaurant. 
She shut right the fuck up the server ended up being okay and DID and T have any permanent scars. But for the rest of the day I was jittery from the adrenaline rush. When I was a brand new cop and I got my first aggravated assault call, dispatcher called my numbers. Told me code 3 I looked at my FTO field training officer asked him stupidity so I go lights and sirens, and he looks at me and is like yes, go, and off I went. Guy was an illegal immigrant from Nicaragua and was trying to murder one of his dealers over 20 dollars his dealer owed. The guy had smuggling charges, other aggravated assault charges. He was a crook. Good call. Learned a lot. We had a full school lockdown because a mountain lion was spotted in the neighborhood. Hope you like this video. Stay frosty my rebels.